It's five o'clock at this time. We'll go ahead and call the Dow County Board of Commissioners into session and uh, and the order. We always begin our meeting with a prayer and a pledge. So I'd like to ask everyone to please stand uh, with us tonight. And Commissioner Lynn Green will lead us in a prayer. Then Commissioner Barry Peters will lead us in the pledge. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening thanking you for your mercy and for your grace. Thank you for all the blessings that you've bestowed upon us today. Father, we pray that as we undertake our work tonight, that everything that we might do here this evening would be for the betterment of the folks of this county. Father, we thank you for the, uh, your son that gave his life on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. We pray that you'd help us do something tomorrow to uh, show people of Christ that they might come to you and, and be saved. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's pledge allegiance to the greatest flag next to the Christian flag, the United States flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Maggie. Seated. Uh, with uh, Veterans Day coming up, this coming Wednesday, our board wants to go on record stating that we appreciate all the veterans who have served our, our nation and our country, who have some even given the ultimate sacrifice, which is their lives, so that we might assemble here today and this evening and uh, be able to conduct the business of McDowell County and its citizens. So, uh, do we have any veterans who are present tonight in the room with us that have served? If, if so, would you please stand so we can recognize the veterans that are present with us tonight? Okay. Branch you served in, and uh, you're right. Well, I, I served, uh, I put six years in the military, uh, 1975 to 81. Served in the United States Navy, uh, signed the 2nd Marine Corps Division, and uh, 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 matter of fact, I never was with any fleet. I was, uh, when I was signed the 2nd Marine Corps Division, I was with the 2nd Marine Corps Division the whole time that I was in there. And of course, we uh, uh, wore the same uniform every day. I don't know that. I was always just said uh, I might as well just been a Marine because that uh, that was who I was, was with all the time and uh, even took my basic training down at uh, Camp Lejeune. And, uh, but anyway, I, I, I'm proud to have served. It uh, still, uh, when that flag goes up, it uh, it still does something to my heart. Uh, I'll never forget when I got swore in, the commander that swore me in, he, he, he asked me a question he said, uh, and I want you to look at that flag, and I looked at it, and he said, are you willing to give your life for that flag? You know, I never thought about it until that moment, and uh, it just seemed like I just sunk deep, deep in my soul, and, uh, and I knew at that moment I could. I said, yes, sir, I can do that, and I would have. So, uh, but I'm proud to have served, and I uh, appreciate y'all recognizing veterans. And so, you know, a veteran, uh, you, sometime this week, make it a point to call uh, somebody you know that's in your family or somebody you go to church with or just somebody you know that has served and make sure to thank them for their service. Our, our board wants to recognize these brave men and women as we begin our meeting tonight. Uh, commissioners, we have the minutes that we need to approve. We have October 12th and October 19th regular session meeting minutes. Uh, what's the uh, pleasure of the board concerning the minutes as presented? Motion approved. Second. Okay, got a motion to approve and second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. And you oppose like side. Also, we have tonight's agenda before us that we need to approve. Before we do the approval, are there any additions or deletions by board members uh, or staff? There being none, what's the pleasure of the board concerning the approval of tonight's agenda? Move to approve. Second. Okay, motion second. Do we have anybody to any further discussion? All in favor say aye. aye. And you oppose like side. Okay, we have our first appointment item, and we have Mr. William Keller with us. He is here tonight to give us a COVID-19 update. So, Mr. Keller, thank you to you and your staff for all you do day in, day out. Uh, and we appreciate you being here tonight. So, the board hears you glad. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, on the board. Appreciate the opportunity to provide an update on COVID-19. Today is day 239 of the EOC being activated for COVID-19. As of today, we have 19,627 tests that have been performed, 18,115 negative results, 1,380 positive tests. Today, um, Health Department announced 41 new positive cases, 
sadly, 36 individuals or McDowell County citizens have lost their life due to COVID. Positivity rate, 14-day rolling average is 7.84%. That is higher than what we have seen and it's certainly higher than what we like. A couple of stats that I'll highlight. Uh, we've seen a record number last week of infections in our elderly population uh, from what we have seen since March 16th when looking at a, uh, the weekly number of new positives in age 65 and greater. While we do have a long-term care outbreak that is ongoing, the majority of these new positives were outside of the long-term care setting. That age group continues to drive our hospitalization rate, and it also continues to drive the mortality rate. It poses uh, the most significant uh, danger to the community is, is in this age group as we're seeing hospitalizations and deaths come from those greater than age 65. Yeah, just a couple other things. Our overall hospitalization rate is 6.81%. The overall mortality rate is 2.6%. In our age 60 to 69 years of age, our hospitalization rate is 19%. We have a mortality rate of 7.75% in that age group. Age 70 to 79, we have a hospitalization rate of 22% mortality rate of 9% in our age group of 80 to 89 years of age we have a 23% hospitalization rate and a 14% mortality rate so you can clearly see and, and then uh, our 90 to 99 years of age is much lower because our incident rate is much lower in that but certainly our concern remains in protecting our most vulnerable uh, specifically our elderly uh, during the time of high viral spread. Large gatherings, private large gatherings, and uh, parties continue to fuel uh, our positivity rate. And it's something that we're asking, please do not hold a mass gathering in excess of the limits uh, that are set. It's a good reason because you, the likelihood of viral spread is much higher when large, people, large amounts of people gather specifically without the uh, use of masks and social distancing. Operations section uh, continues to focus on community testing sites. Today's site was uh, number 101 that we've conducted since May. Uh, we have consistently had two to three community testing sites out. It's fast, efficient, it's free. It really protects and serves underinsured or uninsured uh, citizens in this county and um, we continue that partnership with the health department. I think we should recognize the staff, not only EMS and the EM staff that has worked these testing sites day in and day out, but also the health department staff. Uh, specifically, these drive throughs they've endured some um, tough conditions from severe weather back in the spring and summer to hot temperatures, uh, but mainly the number of uh, individuals, the COVID positives that are coming through there that they're uh, putting their own health and safety at risk, uh, but a shout out to them. Our EOC staff continues to manage the COVID dashboard, which can be found that data is updated with charts and graphs Monday through Friday. We continue our close coordination with long-term care facilities. As of this afternoon, we have 65 residents at Auto Care that have tested positive, 26 staff members. Of those, 39 residents and 16 staff have recovered, and sadly, we've had three deaths at Auto Care. They are currently in day 48 of their outbreak and on day one of the 28-day cycle. And in congregate living for an outbreak to be declared over, you must run the 28-day cycle without having any new additional positives uh, for the outbreak to be uh, classified as over. Deer Park has four staff, zero residents. They're on day eight, uh, total days in outbreak, and also day eight of the 28-day cycle. So far, we have not had any residents test positive in the second outbreak at Deer Park, and our close coordination continues there. McDowell Detention Facility, which is classified as congregate living facility, as is uh, our pr local prison, but uh, McDowell Detention Facility, four staff, two inmates have tested positive. Of those, three staff and two inmates have uh, fully recovered. They're on day 21 of the 28-day cycle. 
Marion Correctional Institution, 17 staff, four inmates tested positive. Uh, 11 staff have recovered. They're on day five of the 28-day cycle. When we look at long-term care, we continue our, our uh, weekly conference calls with this facility, but literally the operations section and the DSS liaison is working with them to field and provide technical assistance on a daily basis and coordinate and get them uh, answers to questions with the assistance of the health department. We continue countywide our county coordination call every Monday with our agency partners across the board. Uh, recently, we've had to incorporate other incidents into that coordination call, but it's primarily used for COVID. The policy group, which is a combination of the community leaders uh, and key players in our healthcare facility, are meeting three times a week via conference call, formulating the strategy forward. Uh, receiving the updates from the health department to ensure we're all working on the same page. Planning section continues uh, to receive information from the state as we look at vaccine distribution and planning when it becomes available. We're back to revisiting our medical surge plans in anticipation of the winter months and we're continuing to refine our non-congregate sheltering plans as FEMA changes policy or changes that policy and also as we work into our winter weather planning non-congregate shelter plans have to be formulated and edited to account for the uh, restrictions that are in place due to COVID. Our logistics section continues to uh, supply PPE to long-term care facilities that are in need. First, these facilities go to their commercial vendors. If there's a shortage or a gap in supply, they send it to the EOC, which in turn would coordinate with the state emergency management office to get PPE delivered. Last week, we've delivered 10,000 gowns uh, in numerous cases of gloves, and we continue our distribution of masks uh, to certain facilities. Finance section, uh, we continue uh, submitting FEMA applications. We are still working on application number five. We've submitted four applications. Uh, once again, FEMA has changed a lot of reporting requirements that has put additional paperwork and documentation uh, burdens on us that is taking additional time. We have a total of nine applications that we're working for have been filed and we're in the process of filing the other five. And then finally, uh, on top of COVID, we've got additional incidents uh, back at the end of October. Uh, we were able to get a state disaster declaration from the city of Marion and the town of Old Fort. That is for the May flash flood event that occurred. Both the city and the town had damages, uh, which to uh, qualify for a state declaration, damages have to exceed 1% of your general operating budget uh, for the fiscal year. We are working the preliminary damage assessment for tropical storm Zeta, uh, both for the county, the city, and the town. All three experienced damages, and we're awaiting uh, state damage assessment uh, for these, but we hope uh, this will meet the federal declaration. With Zeta, 135 storm-related calls, 88 of which were wind damage reports, 47 reports of separate reports of flash flooding, and fortunately, uh, the rain stopped when it did, or we would have had a big mess. Uh, that was trending uh, in the wrong direction there for the first couple hours, uh, but fortunately. Uh, it led up. We had two structures damaged, numerous cars damaged, we had multiple mudslides and rock slides. We provided emergency protective measures and coordination. Fire, uh, Woodlawn Fire, the Sheriff's Office and EMS uh, put apparatus on the north side of the landslide on 226 to provide covers to Turkey Cove, Cox's Creek and Little Switzerland as those folks were isolated from emergency services uh, from McDowell County for about 36 hours. And on top of that, we're monitoring uh, the latest forecast for a potential heavy rainfall event, uh, not only Tuesday night into Wednesday, but potentially the weekend as the remnants of Eda or Edda, whichever one you want to uh, say, are forecast to potentially come up through the southeast. Uh, so definitely a busy time. We uh, appreciate the support. Happy to take any questions. How much, uh, how much rainfall are you just predicted to come with that one? The first round is uh, projected three to four inches right now. Wow. And we were awaiting the evening update. So like any of these forecasts, they'll 
it'll drop, they will increase until we get right up to the event. But that was the initial thing. I might as well kiss my drive goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Right. About Your COVID update, the uh, hospitalizations, can you uh, tell me, and I don't know if you keep up with it beyond once maybe you see the case, but uh, how many are here and how many have been transferred to other places? Yeah, there's no good way for us to maintain that data. I do not have that data. Okay. Um, at the very best, for us to try to maintain it is knowing when someone gets hospitalized, but trying to track them is virtually impossible with the various uh, hospitals that folks go to in the different healthcare systems. Okay, other comments, questions? Okay, we, your crew does an outstanding job and, and rest assured that this board backs you 100% what you're doing, you and your organization. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Okay, let's move to our next item on our appointment schedule. And we have uh, the introduction of uh, Kim Effler. So I guess Kim will introduce herself tonight. She's our new chamber uh, director. And from what we received, Kim, probably uh, the first female executive uh, director for the McDowell Chamber of Commerce. So congratulations on um, that also. So the board hears you gladly and, and we appreciate all the chamber does to help uh, the businesses within McDowell County and, and the hard work you do day in, day out. So the floor is yours. Welcome to our temporary boardroom. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Um, good evening, Chairman Walker, County Commissioners, Ashley. Thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. For those of you that don't know me, I am Kim Eckler. Just a little bit about me. About me, I was born and raised in Parkersburg, West Virginia. I have a degree in paralegal studies and a 10-year banking uh, career uh, with BB&T. In 2007, the bank transferred me from West Virginia to the tiny little mountain town of Old Fort, <laughs> while our uh, newest branch was under construction. I opened the East Asheville branch of bb and in December of 2008, a time when the financial world that I had always known was soon to change forever. Um, after marrying my husband, Jerome, the newest elected alderman in Old Fort, um, and an Old Fort native, and welcoming our newborn son, Jack, I left my banking career to raise my children. Fast forward to 2018. I was actively working as a volunteer for the Old Fort Chamber of Commerce. I'll uh, stress the word volunteer. <laughs> I had hoped to bring life to a struggling organization. I quickly became the volunteer exec again, volunteer executive director, and shortly after, I met Steve Bush. Steve and I worked on several projects in Old Fort, and our chambers, for the first time, started collaborating, maybe the first time ever. Um, when Steve's office manager of 11 years announced her resignation, Steve dropped a hint, and soon thereafter I was working for the McDowell Chamber of Commerce. Little did I know the stars would soon align again as Steve secretly planned his exit strategy. He shared with our board that he was moving um, on to his next business adventure, truly an adventure, in late 2020. Our board worked hard to create a leadership transition and succession plan, and in June of 2020, I was fully endorsed by our board of directors to replace Steve. Currently, I sit on the MBA board, the TBA board, the MEDA board, the Fonta Flores State Trail Advisory Board, the McDowell Trails Association board, the Workforce Pipeline board, and am the treasurer of Connect McDowell. <laughs> you go to a lot of meetings, don't you, Kim? Is that right? You go to a lot of meetings? I go to a lot of meetings, yes. Uh, my husband, Jerome, and I live in Old Fort with our children, Lexi and Jack. Um, Lexi's a freshman this year at Gardner-Webb. In our free time, we enjoy hiking and driving the parkway and traveling to the beach as often as we can. So I'd like to take a few minutes to provide a chamber update and a few uh, talk of, about a few of the projects that we've been working on. Um, we have worked really hard to enhance our team by creating accountability charts um, that ensures all of our staffing bases are covered. 
Um, COVID allowed us to really step back and ensure that we had all of the people and all of the places needed to um, fulfill our mission in, in the community. We've aligned, aligned talent with job descriptions and we've created new positions and filled those positions. Currently, we have an executive assistant, a communications and marketing director, a membership engagement and municipal events coordinator, and a retail manager. In July, we officially merged with the Old Port Chamber of Commerce. We have shifted our focus to member value. Member value is really all we've been talking about as a staff. Um, we've created a member advisory committee that shares information from a member level. This committee also um, is the pipeline for future board members. Um, we created an onboarding and retention process that works to create, to, to keep new members and retain existing members. We're working to enhance membership engagement. We really want our members to be involved. We've been forced to think outside of the box um, about our existing events. During a, a global pandemic, we can't have mass gatherings like we used to have, so we've been starting to think about new initiatives that would in will encourage our business um, community to network without the fear of COVID-19. And lastly, we're working to create a culture of gratitude. We want our members to know that their investment and our organization matters and that we are thankful for their support. And lastly, we have created a strategy to elevate our investment in the Municipal Event Center. We've hired, as I mentioned, a Municipal Event Center, Center coordinator who will oversee booking events and day-to-day -day operations. We'd really like to, to elevate that space. <coughs> We're working closely with the City of Marion to improve our partnership with the landlord of the Municipal Event Center. And we're working to create a long-term strategy that will strengthen our investment in the investments of our community <coughs> partners. <coughs> Lastly, the Chamber staff and Board of Directors have worked hard to create a five-year plan called our Vision 2025 Strategic Plan. The handout you've each received will provide a summary of that plan. There are lots of exciting things happening at the Chamber, but we couldn't do what we do without the support and collaboration of each of you. Our organization is proud to be in McDowell County's Community Chamber. We are grateful for your support and your partnership. I look forward to working closely with each of you, and thank you for your time. Well, Kim, I'll just say, I'll start out to say this, that um, during a, a pandemic, we are so proud of our local businesses and uh, the support that has been given to them. And it's been pretty successful, even through the pandemic. Uh, if you look at our numbers, uh, compared even local to statewide numbers on, on the revenue, uh, sales tax revenue dollars, McDowell County is just trucking along. And uh, sure, uh, as William would say, and anybody else would say, we need to do it safely. Uh, we need to do it properly with, with the proper guidelines in place. But, Listen, we, we are open for business. Uh, pandemic or no pandemic, uh, do it the right way and you can still function and operate and uh, grow. I, I, you know, I want us to grow coming out of this, this pandemic. I want, I want to see just the, the atmosphere and the spirit of growth and uh, cooperation, partnership. And this board, one of the things that we delight in as a board is to uh, see who we can partner with to make this a better place for everybody to live, to work, to raise their families, and enjoy a good quality of life. And that's what we're determined we're gonna do. And so, uh, congratulations, number one, on your appointment uh, to the executive director's position. And uh, rest assured, our board stands as a partner uh, at every turn to make that chamber even more successful and the members of the chamber more successful. Uh, so, with that being said, comments or questions by, by board members? Yeah, I'd just like to say uh, briefly that uh, being from Old Fort, I'm an Old Fort native, and uh, uh, anyway, I, I do see and hear a lot of what goes on, and, and I do want to say that uh, I recognize Kim tonight as being part of the mechanics that uh, help get uh, a lot of things going in Old Fort. Uh, so, uh, I appreciate her hard work up in that area, and uh, I certainly can say that we look forward to working with you throughout the county. 
I just say this the face of the organization has gotten better since <laughs> Steve Bush is gone. She's, uh, he's don't quote me on that. <laughs> I don't want Steve Bush, if you're watching, I didn't mean to appeal you, sir. You're still a friend. <laughs> I certainly appreciate your comments. Uh, I believe, just to add to what you said about the, the pandemic, I believe that our business community has emerged a better version of what we ever thought it could be. Um, our community has, has joined um, stronger through, through these times, and I'm really excited to see where we'll go from here. Kim, I've heard uh, nothing but good, uh, even when you were a volunteer. <laughs> Uh, uh, people talking about the job that you were doing and I'm, I'm glad that we have got uh, somebody with your vision and your professional conduct in this position thank you and, and one thing I say too uh, that I like you being the director 10 years in banking so you understand what it takes to be successful and made a perfect choice when they chose you because you've got the strength but you've also got the personality and the drive to get it done and i appreciate that i just think you made a comment about pulling old fort you know and the, the old fort chamber and that's one of the things we've always kind of struggled with throughout i mean i've got some history there through tda and stuff like that and it's always an issue it seemed like they always played the hedge and it didn't seem like Mary was getting everything, so what we always heard. Old Fort wasn't getting anything, and, and uh, money wise or help or anything else. And it's just good to see. And, and you married an Old Fort native, which is great. I did. And uh, welcome aboard. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Ashley, anything you want to add? She's doing a great job. Uh, I'm glad to see her on the team as far as you know, local leaders and the local yeah. economies. And she'll, she'll do great. Okay. Well, um, yeah. Kim. Thank you so much for being here. And again, congratulations from our board and we stand ready to assist at every turn, okay? Thank you, thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. At this time, let's go to our next item on our appointment schedule. And uh, you know, we talk about uh, William and the COVID-19 situation and we go to the business side of the chamber. Now we're going back to uh, what I call some of the backbone of our community volunteer fire departments so we've got uh some guys here with us from the pg fire department and they're here to make a request tonight so guys if y'all don't mind just come up to the podium and introduce yourself and welcome to the boardroom and and on behalf of the board let me say thank you to you and your department for all you do to uh, uh help make the lives of people at pg tolerable when a, a bad thing happens so thank you Mary. um I'm Anthony Keller, the president of the board of directors for the PG Fire Department. I'm Neil Sotomayor, chief of PG Fire Department. Uh, we're here before you this evening, and we really appreciate your time and hearing us out um, for a request for a tax-free loan in an addition to the current facility that we have. Um, in 1988, the current facility that we have was built. Um, in over 31 years, we're just outgrowing that facility, so we're looking to expand uh, we feel like we provide most the premier fire protection for the community so um, we're looking to keep that cutting edge going um, and with your support of this loan we've got some uh, some plans here of what we're looking for um, in achieving that goal um, the loan we're looking through is uh, is through first bank which is local um, here in town. And Mr. Wooten with First Bank has, has been really great uh, dealing with and providing us all the information and everything we need. These plans, is that in addition to in addition to the, what, what's it there, what's there now? Yes, so sir, we taking over that car wash property? A couple years property. ago, we, we bought the car wash property um, and we're looking to expand over to there. Um, and then looking at, at some mappings in order to keep that five mile uh, protection district for the Department of Insurance. Where we're currently situated, um, it don't give us a complete coverage area, um, being that we cover so much of Highway 80 North, but we're currently everything to the upper side of Lake Tahoma is within a five mile response area. Um, and then everything to the west um, with the compact that was agreed um, last year with Sugar Hill 
kind of merged everything into that five mile coverage area. So the only remaining um, coverage that is not in a rated fire district is the north end of Highway 80. Um, and there's really no way to address that short of building a fire station north of the lake. What's your, uh, Andy, what's your current fire rating for your district? We are currently a class five. Good job, good job. That's a lot of work when you get to class five. There is, we, and that's say the people that own property in your fire yeah, district we were, uh, on their insurance. Yes, sir. And you know, a class five is anything lower than a class five really only is helping the, the business side. I mean, our goal is ultimately to get to a class one, but as a volunteer organization, and the requirements are very stringent. So we're we're striving to be number one, but. Well, I'll say congratulations on half the board and your acquisition of that property and your vision uh, to expand your current base to help uh, meet requirements from the uh, Department of Insurance. So, and the board, the drawing looks great and uh, it'd be a nice facility the community can be proud of. Uh, Mr. Wooten, anything you want to add to this on, on what action would he take tonight? You do have a resolution, I guess on page 15, uh, that the bank has set uh, your endorsement they can get the loan and get started very soon. Mr. Okay. Chairman, I'd like to move that we uh, request or uh, approve their request for the resolution. And with that, I'd like to say that these guys were in junior high when I was SRO. And that just is that's not right. <laughs> you shouldn't be that old, but I'm glad to see you guys out there leading the community. I'll second it. Okay, motion second discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like side. And that's a 5 0 vote to move this thing forward. So we appreciate it. Gentlemen, y'all nice have a good evening and uh, keep up the good work. You know, we're hearing good news out of PG. Good news out of PG. We like that. Okay, let's go to the next item on our appointment. Uh, <coughs> Well, actually, we're, we're in old business actually now. Yes. Item A, old business, public shooting range update. Mr. Wood, go ahead and serve this out. Yes, sir. Uh, we'll cover this fairly quickly. Uh, again, we had the groundbreaking on the 26th for that uh, project. Uh, great article in the paper uh, above the fold there, if you, uh, if you got to see that. Appreciate that coverage for such a great event. The, uh, the work was slowed down with a recent rain, as you can imagine, there, uh, as we've talked about, it's primarily a grading project, uh, up, really up until the end, but um, so they have uh, had to slow down a little bit uh, because of that until things could dry out, but they are uh, back at it this week. Uh, we have been in discussions with Chuck Hamrick, our, uh, our architect, over the design of uh, the office and classroom building. He has been to uh, the facility in Cleveland County to get some, some ideas on maybe how uh, the operation should be set up here from a design perspective. And so we'll probably do a, a field trip or um, what have you to go see what they do for, for that setup. Um, and so again, the project is moving right along. You do have a schedule, uh, it looks like start on page maybe 18. And again, that's subject to change based on weather conditions and so forth, but um, the anticipated completion date is August of uh, 21 at this point, but again, subject to change. Uh, wildlife has, uh, I think it was Commissioner Green that maybe suggested that we needed a sign out, says what's happening coming soon uh, out at the road there on Ashworth Road. Uh, and so, we communicated that with with nc wildlife and they said absolutely they said what are we calling it and so we uh, we did look back at the agreement and they pointed out that we had in the agreement that it was going to be called the mcgow county shooting range that's pretty pretty vanilla of course but um that's subject to change uh, and so uh, McDow mcdowell county public shooting complex Anything along those lines, it's it's for y'all to decide, not them. Uh, Let's do this. Uh, let every commissioner submit two. Uh, we meet in uh, November twenty. Next week, the sixteenth. Sixteenth. Okay. By next, by our next meeting, uh, prior to that meeting, 
that on November 16th submit two names uh, to uh, our county manager and then we'll just look at all the names on a sheet of paper and we'll make a decision in. Sound good? Yep. That way we we'll get you some direction. That's good. But the project's moving right along. Okay, that started at what? That request was made when Burke County uh, fought it. McDowell County went after it. 2016? January 2016 was the first presentation to the commission. January 2016, and here we are uh, almost oh, December of 2020, and it should be completed by when? August of 21. August 21, so that's basically uh, a long time. But here again, uh, diverse, we're talking about recreation. This is recreational shooting that will have supervision with a, a range safety officer there to, uh, here again, partner with the school system where they can go up there and shoot uh, where maybe uh, law enforcement might have another avenue to uh, use and so and the general public gets to go out there so uh, this is a great project great project board is so excited about this happening let's move to the next item item B this is the emergency services capital projects update uh, okay uh, quick update on uh, capital project uh, here you have an email from mr. DePoister page 32 with some estimated completion dates provided by the contractor uh, for station four again this is the north station on the north side of marion uh, very specific date of february 22nd 2021 you do have a picture uh, or two that's in your packet uh, page 33 and 34 34 you can see the uh the truck bay in the rear i'm sure most of you have seen uh, this either on site or driving by and so you see it's a double truck bay uh, where they would pull in uh, capacity for two trucks. Uh, it looks very nice compared um, you know, to uh, what it looked like before. So they're moving right along again towards a February completion. I uh, don't have any pictures of the, the headquarters site. Again, it's mostly dirt, not all dirt at this point. The estimated completion date, again, subject to change with weather, is November 26th of next year. Um, if we have more tropical systems, it, it probably will slip a little bit, but uh, as you can see by Mr. DePoister's note, the estimated date for the building pad is uh, early December. So they're essentially uh, getting close to final grade, and then they'll start on the underground uh, utilities, plumbing, et cetera, and then work on the building pad so that's really and that's going to be a beautiful site uh, i was talking to william today and uh about how they moved all the dirt and, and it's flat and it looks like it's ready to go william said they've already marked off the uh, spot you know started putting some stakes out flags out and william said that's going to be a beautiful place for a uh, uh the headquarters to be and, and that's so true and what we love and i know what william has advocated for is quicker response times saves lives and so our board's motto has been right with william uh minutes equal muscle in a heart attack situation and we want to respond as quickly with with the help that that uh, get there as quickly as we can just an example uh the fire chief at peels creek had a heart attack yesterday passed away this morning um, and uh, so you know it's all about response time and getting there as quickly as possible and that's why during a pandemic, now how many counties can say this? During a pandemic, uh, we're full steam ahead on remodeling and creating uh, a space for a base and then building a brand new headquarters. So we in this board is committed to making sure we've got, you've got everything you need to uh, respond and, and, and be as efficient as possible. So any questions or comments by board members? Okay, there being none. Terry, anything you need to add? Okay, um, let's go ahead and move to item C. This is facilities update. Terry, you may want to talk a little bit here, maybe. After Ashley goes first. We'll, we'll leave you some space, maybe. Uh, these are mostly related uh, to uh, things we talked about last month. Again, item one here, uh, Mr. Hamrick, again, the architect. We noted next, or last month, that the, uh, the Kirksey building, as we called it 69 North Main that the county has purchased. There were no blueprints to be found for uh, that building. And so Mr. Hamrick and his staff had to go in and measure every room 
And so we've received that this afternoon as far as the existing conditions with dimensions and everything. So now that he has that, he can now start with drawings for everything beyond the boardroom. The, the board has made it very clear that the, uh, what was the chapel will be the boardroom, but beyond that, it will be administrative offices for uh, the HR department, finance, uh, clerk, county manager, et cetera. And so that's the part that will get started on uh, very quickly. Uh, the next item we again talked about last month, um, there was a, I, I can't remember if it was a motion, honestly, but uh, there was direction to. Uh, uh, let me back up real quick. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I think Terry DeForster has told the board the completion of that project uh, on Main Street in the Kirksey Building is March the 1st. Is that correct, Terry? Very possible. He <laughs> <laughs> didn't say what year, though, so. Um, <laughs> But it is something that um, Mr. Hamrick, he, he gets the message. And he has a lot of projects that he's doing in this county, and I'm sure other counties, but uh, he understands that this is a priority of this board uh, to move this uh, along as fast as he can uh, on the design uh, end of things. So um, his effort is definitely appreciated. Uh, and so we will, this isn't something that's done in a vacuum. This is something where he will look at the existing space for, uh, again, uh, beyond the boardroom uh, where the annex is as far as the usage. And we'll talk to staff and board staff will talk to the board and make sure we're very clear what's happening here. Uh, the next item, uh, there was direction for staff to look at two existing buildings on South Garden Street has been purchased over the years for various reasons. Uh, the direction was to look at removing those and grading them for parking. Uh, Mr. DeVoyster and I and uh, Chairman Walker met at, on the site last week uh, to look at, uh, look at the property. Uh, I actually spoke with the adjacent property owner over some options. We do have one quote in right now. Uh, we have two other contractors, I think, coming this week. Um, they're local, so we'll get uh, get those in hand. Uh, and maybe we can bring those back Monday. Had a nice aerial view, didn't we? Mm -hmm. You, you, you have a great perspective deck. from the parking deck of, the, of that site. So um, if we have those in hand, we'll try very hard to have those in hand Monday for your consideration. Um, and the way that flows to actually just tell the board real quick. You know, you, you would think that here's your admin building, you would think it's right straight at those two bit, but the property goes like this and juts out that way. So uh, there, there might be more parking there than what we anticipated. There's a little bit of a, a jagged line, exactly. So there is an opportunity there uh, to have a better outcome than what we have right now. The third item, uh, again, we talked, I uh, believe it was in this room last month about relocating probation parole to the second floor of the administration building. Mr. DeFoyster and I met last week, I believe, uh, maybe the week before, with a representative of the Guardian Ad Litem program. Uh, they would be moved from their existing location uh, from that space. So we've met with them. Uh, we've communicated again with the Extension Service, uh, Ms. Sampas, the director there on um, uh, plan relocation as well as child support so everyone that's up there knows what's happening and they're all on the, the same page as far as, as the plan so um, appreciate direction from the board on that uh, I miss anything the the last item uh, I mentioned the the Marion Armory uh, it's probably been a, maybe about a year since we've talked about that but uh, we had received notice from the North Carolina National Guard that they are consolidating the smaller armories in the in the region to what they call a regional readiness center, and that's based in Morganton, uh, where the high rise was located. You may have seen, if you haven't, I would not right now, but uh, later on, look on YouTube. There's a demolition video of the high rise. It's very impressive if you haven't seen it. Uh, shot by drone and all kinds of things. But that's where the regional readiness center um, it will be located and once that's built and operational the armories in this region will 
will close and consolidate to that center. Uh, the way the armory uh, deed was written is that the prior property owner will receive the property once they close, which is McDowell County. So we did receive the, the uh, blueprints for that facility. And so we have those uh, for when the timing is right to have the architect look at them and, uh, and make some evaluation recommendations to the board. So a lot going on. Mr. DePoyster, I think, is screening calls from me these days, but um, he and his staff and Mr. Hammer are working really hard on these projects. It's all for the betterment of service provision uh, for the people. Okay, uh, comments, questions for uh, Mr. Wood and uh, board members? I'd just like to make uh, one comment about uh, the last item here. Uh, I think, and this would be my suggestion, and I'm sure some of the rest of you feel the same way, that uh, when we do uh, obtain the armory that we look seriously at, the DSS building, I think that needs to be the next move that we make is for those folks. I agree. Yeah, get that consolidated. Good point, then. Anybody else have anything? Okay, let's, uh, since we're talking about buildings and grounds, let's continue the theme and go to uh, item D. This will be recreation facility updates. Thank you. Um, again, sometimes there's we're not breaking ground or cutting ribbons or whatever, but we're working towards that eventuality, especially in this area. A, a few uh, updates on the Recreation Center property. Uh, going back uh, maybe a year or two, we had talked uh, board and staff about making improvements to the Recreation Center by a grant. And when we started to look at some of the uh, the paperwork and different things around the recreation center property. There was a title issue um, since the school system owned that property before the county uh, that uh, needed to be cleared up. And so thanks to the efforts of the school system's attorney, Mr. Coates, uh, Mr. Garrett, and definitely the school board for uh, rectifying that issue, uh, we now completely own the recreation center free and clear with no further title issues. Once that was uh, wrapped up, we have ordered a, a survey. There's never been a survey of that property. And so we've talked about a landscape architect going and looking at that property, making recommendations. He really needs a topographical survey. And so uh, tomorrow there will be uh, essentially a bid opening uh, survey and proposals. So once that is done, he will be able, to, being the landscape architect, will be able to uh, really get some drawings going and plans uh, and again with coordination of board on what you would like to see there so that's very exciting again it's just little minor steps uh, towards a, a greater goal for whence we have a plan uh, based on your input and, and others you can now apply for for grants and uh, different opportunities that really haven't been available before so it's exciting to, to get to that milestone be a lot more to come on that uh, quickly in the recreation center gym the facility itself uh, we did again take the opportunity while things are a little bit slower due to covid to uh, replace the led uh, replace the existing fixtures in the gym with uh, new led fixtures and uh, a definite shout out to mr boister staff for uh, i think doing all of the all of the fixtures in there um, it was a somewhat easy process once you know what you were doing and which they did thankfully because i wouldn't know where to start but uh, the sound just from the lights uh, having that reduced the led has made a huge difference which is important for the next part uh, we are getting quotes for sound baffles that would either hang from the ceiling joists uh, the rafters or hang on the wall or maybe a combination because if you've been in that room and you bounce the basketball it's ear piercing i mean it's 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 awful yeah to be be up there during a uh, 
eight to ten year old girls game uh, and people screaming. It's unreal. The sound is unreal. I know Lynn here to their grandkids and I've got uh, been up there, Barry has been there, I'm sure all we have. And uh, it's just, we're looking for a, a real strong change that's going to be noticeable for people when they go in and use that gym moving forward with uh, recreational basketball that's programs. Right. Exactly. So it's again incremental but making a big difference. I know whenever uh, Cheryl and I were up here winning the bad men, <laughs> all the people cheering for us was really bothering me. <laughs> Both of them. All two of them? Yeah. Was two or three? <laughs> were they cheering? The last bear off. <laughs> combination. Uh, so lots of uh, good things. Uh, it's not on the list, but. Um, can we back up just one second, yes, though? Please. Uh, Commissioner Brown brought up that, and y'all, you didn't win a gold medal, though, did you? Yes, we did. Okay, just want for the record, Madam Clerk, can you put that in the minutes that you did win a gold medal? Yes, gold medal. Uh, again, uh, not on the list, but uh, we are having uh, some flashing. Or if, is it the whole roof or just the flashing? Just the flashing. Just the flashing all around. The perimeter. Right. Uh, on the perimeter of the gym is being replaced. If you look at the facility, especially after a rain, you see just where water is going down the sides and, and the you know, water evaporates, it leaves that dark stain. So we're, it's a flashing issue. So that's going to be replaced, which will stop the water from going down the side of the building. And then once that happens, we'll clean the side and it'll look uh, tremendously better. Um, are we looking at those windows too? Actually, I know that the, we the are, big windows when you go yes in. Sir, it could be a much longer list than it is, but uh, we're getting uh, definitely the local company, McDowell Glass, to look at it, but we'll also contact folks in the region gotcha. probably to replace it all. So I think we've maybe done one at a time and just you know, knock it out all at once. Get a lot better price in that way too. Uh, quickly on Maple Leaf. Uh, related not so much on the title issue but um, the need to get a plan uh, developed there uh, there is a survey on that property but it's uh, just the boundary only so uh, we need a topographical and that's that's been ordered and we'll use the existing survey as a basis uh, that'll be in hand i believe next week and again mr blackley who is chuck hamrick's preferred recommended uh, landscape architect he is uh, going to do a development plan based on your input on uh, utilizing the, the balance of the property for additional improvements there so once he has the survey so a lot of good things happening there and then lastly we'll mention uh, the Woodlawn and Roadside Park uh, this is the least uh, area on Forest Service property Mr. DePoyster's staff uh, coordinated the uh, improvements to the restroom plumbing uh, the HVAC replacement is in process. Uh, there's additional improvements, uh, operational improvements that are planned. And uh, we do have a lease renewal up with the Forest Service uh, that may be on the December agenda. It's a 10 year lease. But uh, Mr. Poyster's staff has done a uh, tremendous work in getting that um, to a better place. Yeah, on behalf of the board, Terry, we want to say thanks for all your hard work. Yeah. You are running wide open. Yeah. Uh, and uh, if, if anybody's watching this meeting and uh, realize that your county government is going at it. Yeah. I mean, pandemic, no pandemic, we're planning, we're working, and we're getting things done for you. Uh, it ain't about us. <laughs> yeah. You know, who cares what we do? I mean, about us. We, we're here to work for y'all. I mean, we raised our hand as commissioners and said we want to work and represent Medow County and make this the best place it can be. And so just in the last uh, 15 minutes, the county manager has given all kind of great updates to what's happening with uh, uh, different aspects of what occurs here. And, and we'll go on record, the board will, and state that we are dedicated to improving our recreational program. From programming to facilities, the, the grounds, I mean, we, we, the board's got a vision, and this board will see the vision come to pass. We're going to work hard on it uh, with staff and, and others, and uh, we want to give y'all something you can be proud of, something that uh, can be utilized, and we want to attract, listen, we, here's one thing we believe in, 
uh, and uh, Kim coming from her background in banking. With this board in the chamber, this board is 100% vested in making this a draw. We want this to be a destination point. And one area that you can draw people in your county is through recreational tournaments. That's a big thing that this board wants to see occur moving forward in 21, 22, and out from there. We want to see this a regional draw. And to do that, we've got to get our facilities and grounds up to uh, what would be competitive with anybody around us. If we're going to try to draw and, and uh, start uh, making our race be competitive, we, when they come for a ball game, a tournament, they're here all weekend and they buy stuff, they, they shop here. Uh, and so this board is really, really determined to, uh, to uh, make our recreational program the best it can be with the facility. So uh, let's go to Black Bear item uh, E. Mr. Wood, if you don't mind, sir. Yes, sir. And this is the project we've talked about uh, really going back to 2005. Uh, Mr. Harmon and I served on a, a, a Duke Energy Committee back at that point where it was first talked about. But both Mr. Harmon and I are on phone calls and planning uh, sessions and Zooms and all those things uh, over the last couple of months with Duke Energy staff uh, with this project. And again, this is the 165-acre uh, tract to the west of the existing boat launch. Uh, what is planned by Duke and you've seen, I think maybe back in January, is an, uh, a day use site that will be a picnic shelter, picnic tables, a fishing pier, uh, just a nice, and hiking trails, those sorts of things. Uh, but also an overnight camping area where, again, we've talked about there will be campsites, there will be provision for uh, camping cabins that will be uh, put in, into place. And so, again, what is going to happen there is Duke Energy is permitting, uh, contracting, constructing this whole park and presenting, you know, Mr. Chairman with the keys to this facility on behalf of uh, Duke Energy for the enjoyment of McDowell County and surrounding residents. And so this is something that is a, a long time uh, coming as far as planning. It will take more planning for the operation. We're just on the front edge of what that looks like to run a facility like this. So we'll definitely lean on folks that uh, have experience in, uh, in such areas that uh, work at state parks and things like that. So uh, we know where to go for, for knowledgeable people. Uh, so as you see, the facility is uh, permitting right now and should be in county operation in 2022. Again, I do a lot of talking on behalf of the organization, but Mr. Harmon is doing a tremendous amount of work on this, uh, and so couldn't do it without him. Uh, Mr. Harmon, anything you add to that? Okay. Uh, actually, we had a good discussion uh, at a meeting prior to this about uh, the cabins and what we need to do there and ideas and that kind of thing. Uh, would it be beneficial if the board gave you just a dollar amount that uh, you could take to Duke? Because our understanding is, according to what you told us, is Duke's going to do all the site work getting, uh, if we decide to go with one, two, three, four, five, initially, uh, I don't want to say cabins, but you know, that something, something that we're in line with what the board's talked about. A dollar amount tonight that would help you uh, to give them so you can start investigating I mean in depth on how many you can buy because you don't need to know that up front and dealing with Duke. So that would be extremely helpful. Okay, Mr. Chairman, I have uh, uh, been doing some investigating on on the cabins uh, and I have suggested to uh, Mr. Wooten that he and I take a trip uh, one day when it's not pouring rain. <laughs> and uh, and look at some uh, some prefab cabins, look at some that uh, have been stick built. Uh, I know down at uh, Big League Camp, uh, they chose they've got several cabins there, but they chose to stick build theirs because of the difference in the price. And uh, uh, but I would suggest and uh, that we uh, set aside at least fifty thousand uh, dollars to cover that because I can I can see them being. Uh, roughly 10,000 a piece. Uh, this thing, uh, 
And uh, another reason that we wanted to take the trip was to, there's a lot of things that you don't see when you go to a campground. You see pads for tents and stuff, or you may see cabins, but you don't see the background that it takes to make that thing work and operate. Uh, and uh, I think that would be beneficial for, for him to see. Uh, but this thing, uh, going by what, uh, and, and I host the campground at the State Park, uh, but if you have this thing open year round, which I hope you do, uh, you've got the potential of, of bringing in revenue in excess of $300,000 a year. I mean, that's, that's good for the county. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Commissioner Green, you have uh, brought up a good point that uh, this would provide a great recreational opportunity for people to do primitive camping uh, and also at the same time uh, be a source of revenue for Dow County. So that's that's a very good point. Uh, and I'll also, I'll make that a motion that we, we set aside $50,000 for, for those cabins so that the project can get moved. Okay, I got a motion on the floor. We have a second. I'll second. Okay, Commissioner Brown makes a second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed, like side. Okay, carries five vote. All right. Let's go to uh, item F under old business. This will be the uh, universal property update. Mr. Wood, go ahead, sir. Yeah, this out. Yes, sir. I'll be quick on this. Um, Again, a great press release, great coverage in the newspaper of the uh, the workforce housing project uh, on the north side of College Drive, really close to us. Again, that uh, after Christmas, there will be additional uh, work taking place there with site studies, surveys, et cetera. But right now, there's lots of meetings uh, with uh, Gateway and uh, Housing Assistance, which is the developer. Uh, with HUD and others so um, again that's a something to look forward to and this board uh, put into put into action and in, in the movement so it's definitely very exciting on the north side on the south side a couple of uh, maybe interrelated projects uh, within several weeks we're still um, waiting to know when exactly that will be bid but uh, You've heard about two access roads on the south side that are paid for by Appalachian Regional Commission. Uh, we think those will be open maybe December 15th at the earliest. Uh, and so we're waiting to see how that uh, works out. Uh, that will be bid by NCDOT. There is also the effort with the Golden Leaf, the CBGI, the uh, community-based uh, grants initiative that we've talked about you endorse an application of $1.5 million for uh, road and uh, uh, utility infrastructure on the south side. That letter of interest was submitted. You've got a copy of uh, some of the information there. Uh, that was submitted thanks to uh, a great effort by uh, Mr. Abernathy. I hit the send button, but um, he did most of the work on uh, getting the information together as well as the engineer. So we'll know in early December if they're going to invite for a formal application and then there would be a, a decision made in April so definitely fingers crossed on that and here again uh, the uh, the total community buy-in when uh, we were we had the uh, tobacco settlement money out and Golden Leaf what what to do with it and uh, the city the county uh, the trustees of the college I mean the school board everybody endorsed buying this property right here and and I, you heard me say it many times and I'll continue to say it this property was voted, bought on a 3-2 vote and uh, Commissioner Peters was actually probably the tiebreaker vote in that scenario it, it, am I recalling that correctly Mr. Yeah, two Peters? Two against and I was the pendulum that swung. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, here again another good move right there by the board to buy this because we provided space for the college they, they've got space needs and and moving forward if they experience growth they've got a space to grow into we created this universal yeah. manufacturing skills training center for industry uh, to be able to come in and set up programs to have uh, people train uh, and and here again uh, it's a win for the people in McDowell County because there's rental income the county leases out portions of this building that generates revenue which in turn helps uh, keep the cost of doing business down here and uh, helps keep fees and other things down for our people. So it's, it's a win. 
and uh, you got to think long term. And so, uh, hats off to all the partners in the project. Other comments or questions? There being none, let's move to uh, new business item A, administrative items. Mr. Wooten, sir, go ahead and lead us out. Yes, sir. Uh, there's a few items here, um, and if it's all right, we'll except for the amendments, we'll just take them separately. Um, you have three Nebo water leak adjustments we'd ask approval on, and you have each listed separately with receipts and explanation. Okay, what's well, pleasure to approve? Motion to approve. approve. Second. Second. Uh, discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like side. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Wood. Thank you. The next one is a listing of uh, uh, our positions. Uh, we're asking that you add the title of public services manager. Uh, this would be a, a new uh, position, more or less, inside that department uh, that would serve, um, essentially, uh, take the place of the role of what was uh, the deputy director for uh, for solid waste. So we're just same person, just shifting duties around. Um, to an existing employee, excuse me, that will have additional duties uh, under that new title. Yeah, so it's not a new employee, it's the current employee, just a different That's right. Okay. Do we approve? Second. Second. Discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like side. Okay. Okay, you have a project uh, budget ordinance amendment five for the courthouse project. Getting very close to the end on that project. Do we approve? Second. Discussion? Uh, I'll say this, the deck looks great uh, up there. Yeah. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed, like side. And the last before the amendments is a closeout resolution for some school project funds. Who we put the resolution say? We have a motion to second discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like side. Okay, for the budget amendments, you have GF 10 through 16, CP1, SP2, SP3, ENT1, 911, F1, and SR1. And I would be glad to go over each and every one if you'd like. I want, I want to say real quick, CP1, where Mr. Brown uh, challenged the school board to match the uh, donation by the board for the YMCA, uh, they did do that, so that was a good move for Mr. Brown by having that uh, challenge issue. But now, what's the pleasure of the board? Motion to approve those amendments. Second. Okay, discussion, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed, like sign. That's all for the administrative. Okay, let's go to item B, order and dates. Mr. Wood, go ahead, sir. Uh, Mr. Harmon is here, and, and it might be best that, that uh, at least on the, the, the Lake James item, that he maybe bring the the summary there. Uh, okay, Mr. Harmon, coming up to the podium, my friend. Yes, sir. Um, the Board of Adjustments, which you might be familiar with, has asked that. <clears throat> couple of amendments we made to the new 2020, we're calling it the 2020 Lake James Protection Ordinance. Uh, they'd like to remove the the warning from the Lake James Protection Ordinance and now any violation will be a fine because we feel like that people should know what's out there. They're also asking that the size of protected trees, the size be reduced from six inches protected down to three inches and above is protected vegetation. And that would be in addition to the tram request. Okay. Comments, questions for Ron. Just let me make sure we just talk about the people should know before they go out there. They're they're given the information prior to or during the process. So the the information is already there to them. Yes, sir. So we're changing from a warning to when, when they sign their permit, it is clearly it's states specified that. work without a permit is a violation. Second. Okay, motion second, discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, like side. Okay, thank you, Ron. Okay, we're supposed to continue on. Okay. Uh, next, you have uh, tax matters. Uh, you do have some write offs starting. Wait, with that backup, did you get the approval of the solid waste operation? Oh, ordinance? thank you. Glad you're doing your job. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just in a hurry to be done with the meeting, I guess. Uh, you also have, uh, under the solid waste ordinance, uh, you have the solid waste operation ordinance, and a, which is, the second is a different ordinance called the illegal solid waste ordinance. If you go back a, a 
a little bit in time, uh, the board asked the planning board to look at uh, littering essentially, and this is the, the product of that. Uh, and so uh, that would be the illegal solid waste ordinance. We have, uh, which is different, we have the solid waste operations ordinance, which deals specifically with the transfer station uh, here up on 226. Uh, we took the opportunity, uh, presented this to you a couple of weeks ago, uh, just sort of like a first reading. Uh, the solid waste operation ordinance is what governs what we do every day at the transfer station, and it definitely needs to be updated. It's just been a while, and we wanted to make sure that was brought up to date. The illegal solid waste uh, does not have to be updated or approved at this point, but um, it is based on something you've asked. And so they're both ready to go if you are. Okay, comments, questions? I have one question on the illegal yes, sir. waste. Uh, is that what we see outside of the uh, collection area, or is that illegal stuff going in? You understand my question? So what would be the enforcement area? Like, you know, yes. Essentially, this would be anywhere in the county outside the municipalities. So if this is someone's uh, house where there's a, an illegal accumulation of waste as defined, which that's pre-existing going back 20-some years, or if it's on the side of the road, or those sorts of things. It's not related to county facilities. I guess my question there is, uh, does our ordinance meet the statute that's already in place that takes care of that? There's a little bit maybe uh, on like roadside litter, but there isn't a statute that regulates the accumulation of waste. At a, at a property. Let me ask you this, actually, because we get calls periodically for somebody who has a neighbor who uh, lets trash pile up and they call say hey they got it's just an eyesore uh, and this looks terrible so you're saying this would give grounds for somebody to go out there and tell them to remove it that it's technically down. covered under the existing solid waste ordinance now well now, uh, but, but we've had people say that they've been told there's nothing that could be done uh, with a neighbor who just piles a bunch of trash up out there and just lets it mail. Typically becomes a health department. I thought they could uh, be required to, to uh, the county would go out and do the cleanup and charge the uh, resident with the uh, cost of the cleanup. It, it, and so there's different situations there depending on the severity, but if someone, you know, in whatever community or whatever outside municipalities had 30 bags of trash piled on their front yard, porch, or whatever, Based on the, the ordinance that exists as of today, not even this one, exists as of today, it's illegal. And that's been in place probably 20, 25 years. I've been a commissioner 18 years, and I've had people come to me. It's never and, been and, in full. And then say, they, and I say, they call the health department, whomever, and uh, the, the, I can take you to, I'm thinking of two examples right now. I could drive here and show you right now where uh, this person beside the person, well, one of the gentlemen's dead now that uh, had talked to me about it and uh, this stuff still piled up out there. I'm just I'm just wondering though and here's where I'm coming from and we've got our attorney here <laughs> but I'm just wondering what gives us as a government body to go on private property and do something like that. You, you have excuse me public health and safety you, you, you're empowered, it's called the general police power, and that's with a little p. It doesn't mean what uh, the nice lady behind us is doing. You have the ability legally, with certain limitations, to regulate public health and nuisances and take care of those. And so as it relates to that situation of the neighbor, you know, if someone says, you know, if they live out in the middle of nowhere and we never know about it and it, it's a house in the middle of 20 acres and they have trash, it's probably not the government's business that there's trash there. Now, if there's kids, children that are in that home, yes, it's the government's business. 
Uh, but if it's someone and they choose to live in that situation, then there's not much you can do. If you go to Mr. Uh, Chairman Walker's scenario where I have a neighbor and he has 30 bags of trash and he's 40 feet from me, that accumulation of waste is a public health concern because of rats and everything else. So that didn't go to the health department? It, it's actually, it's covered by uh, the existing solid waste ordinance and the illegal solid waste ordinance that's been talked about here is a little bit stronger and would take that place. But as currently written, it would be uh, referred to the sheriff's office for investigation uh, and you know, for citation, depending on uh, the situation. So let me get this clear then. If that be the, the, the route you would take, then there would have to be some type of judicial order to enforce that rather than just our folks going in and taking care of it. So currently... Because I'm, I'm just going to tell you, I'm, pardon me for interrupting you, but I can see where somebody's going to be... Uh, some properties you're going to go on, you're going to get in trouble. <laughs> and you're going to be calling the sheriff anyway. Right, and the existing ordinance covers the illegal accumulation of, of waste. So this isn't anything new that's being proposed in that regard. And so this is essentially splitting off something that's been in existence for at least 20, maybe 30 years, maybe 25 years. And the enforcement of that is, is the Sheriff's Department? The Sheriff's Office, that's right. Uh, is this one of those that we can look at till next week? Absolutely. The operations ordinance, we would ask that it doesn't really affect anyone outside our, our parameters, uh, but the other can, yes, sir. During, during our motion to table, it's till uh, our next meeting on the 16th. So move. So discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, lock side. Okay. Aye. Aye. That gives everybody time to, to dig into it a little deeper. Now. Let, me, let me say one more thing on that. I, I'm not against cleaning the place up, but I am very cautious about government intrusion on private property, and I'd like to see it really spelled out clear. So that's all. Is it okay to take action on, action on the operations ordinance to get that behind us? So yeah, what's uh, there, there a motion? I make a motion to go ahead with the operations. So you got a motion, you have a second? Second. Second discussion on favor, say aye. Aye. Aye, opposed, like side. Okay. All right, let's move to item C. Uh, this is tax matters. Mr. Wood, go ahead, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, starting on page 97 or tax matters, you have some uh, write offs from the uh, tax collector, and most of those being deceased or bankruptcy. Um, you do have some refunds and I will point out uh, there are some discoveries uh, and a lot of that is due to the efforts of your business listing uh, office uh, doing their job so we do uh, at that quickly I'll mention that um, we do our best every year to remind folks through pamphlets Facebook news releases everything else that businesses are required to list their uh, you know, personal business property and so every year we get people that are surprised by that and that's just they're busy doing their uh, making uh, things move there so we're always trying new and different ways to get that word out. Move we approve. Second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. You opposed last time. Okay let's move to item D. This is board appointments and we have a uh, planning board uh, two members uh, have now become, well, will soon be, become elected officials, and they'll be leading the board, the planning board. Uh, one is Chris Allison, and one is Corey McKinney. So uh, the planning board has requested that Terry Good, who's a current um, alternate member, be uh, elevated to a full-time board member. Typically, we do a first and second reading, but since this is probably in, in the need to have a quote, a quorum there, uh, what's the pleasure of the board to go ahead and move Mr. Good up and advertise for the uh, other so slots? Okay, got a motion? Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Light sign. Okay. Uh, let's see. Citizen comment. Let's move to that. Madam Clerk, has anybody signed up to speak tonight? 
I'll, I'll add that I will advertise those planning board appointments and bring those back to the next month. Okay. <clears throat> and no, sir, we do not have any one. Okay. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, let's go to commissioners and staff uh, reports, communications. Does staff have anything they need to uh, bring to the attention of commissioners and vice versa? Do the commissioners have anything that needs to be made known at this time? Uh, Christmas party. Uh, Mr. Peters has talked about that. Me and the county manager had a conversation about that today. So we need to get input from the board. Uh, one thing I told I told the county manager when he asked me about it, I said I think that uh, with COVID, of course, Mr. Keller would definitely advocate not to have uh, a, a gathering because we would be in violation of the, of the uh, state law. So, but. We value, I know every board member values their, their county employees. So I asked Mr. Wooten uh, about this. I said, let's just go ahead. It's catered every year anyway. And let's have it a uh, drive through at our uh, senior center and uh, have the, the meals prepared, pre prepared, and uh, just pass them out and do the normal advice like you would normally do. And, and that way we're, we're still feeding our uh, people and giving them a good Christmas meal. And uh, also, we do the door prizes. Uh, we could uh, look at a method to uh, do that also. Third Third would there would there be a uh, mechanism to, and I'm sure it would if you uh, survey your departments, but to figure out how many meals you need to actually. Uh, he would do, they do that every year. Yeah, there's a form. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. The standard the standard form that they do every year to retirees and to to our current employees. And commissioners, I told Ashley to, I, I, I said, that would be a good idea to have the commissioners there uh, also to wave at everybody going through and you could have a certain time slot. But I mean, I personally like that. Now, if you don't like that as a commissioner, state you don't like it or state another opinion or state what you want to do. What does that meal normally cost us? Um, they get back to you when the next day. When you said door prizes, were you going to maybe take the list that you get of how many is going to pick up meals, use those names, and draw much like they do at the help thing? What was you talking about? I had about a crazy that? idea. Uh, just, just yeah. we were talking out loud. I said, do uh, every tenth card or every uh, blue card. Do a blue card one time. Do a red card next time. I said <coughs> they can worry about that. That's the staff. They get paid to worry about things like that. Yeah, but they I, think, would love that. I think whenever they get a list of those that are coming, they could put the names in a hat and draw them out. I like that. Fair yeah. That's easier. <coughs> uh, is this another one of those things we can wait one week on? Do you get the, or can you pull that up, cost of what it usually is? Well, standard, do you got basically the same amount of people come every year, don't you? To me, the, the, uh. If you're going to do a drive through, you probably have more people. I don't know. You might have less, but it's 2019, the food was $3,605.81. <coughs> okay. The gifts were $2,957.16. Yeah. Okay. And the service awards were $2,667.49. Okay. 2020 figures are on here. Wooten, is that anticipated? I'm not sure. I'd it says 2020 was $4,048.50 for food, gifts $4,945.13, and service awards $3,052.93. That's not good, but it's not good. $4,000. I'm going to go ahead with it. Got a motion to go ahead and proceed forward? So, yeah, I'll be Discussion, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed, like side. Okay. Right. Christmas will occur in McDowell County for our employees. The, the only communication I had from, from staff, uh, again, you mentioned Veterans Day earlier. We are closed Wednesday uh, for our offices. We do point out, of course, that our uh, emergency services and our law enforcement uh, are working that day, of course, and we do appreciate that. But, Again, our, our veterans, whether they're on the board or uh, county staff, they do a great job. And I won't go on record too, uh, and board members, you can say yes or no, but uh, I see no need to ever defund our police department, our sheriff's department. I, I would say in regard to defund the police movement, I would say we probably need to increase the police <laughs> uh, movement uh, more so. But anyway, that's just a sidebar there. 
could we not implement an ordinance that would declare that we would uh, to never decrease the funding of the I'm going to come up behind you and do it. And they could, they could, but maybe they would. We go on record. Resolution. We go on record doing it. Uh, well, I'll entertain any kind of motion. I'd like to make a motion on that. That we create a resolution for that. Second. Okay. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, lots of Okay. Case 5-0. All right. Do we have any other items? If not, they have a motion to adjourn. We will. Oh, we'd like if you could adjourn to Thursday at 4.30 for the, the joint meeting with the college board of trustees. Okay. What time is that? 4.30. So moved. Okay. Got a motion to adjourn to Thursday at 4.30. Second. Discussion? That's big deal tech, right? That'd be, a, that'd be here in this room. All folks say aye. Aye. Any opposed by side? Meeting is adjourned. Aye.